Today, I'm going to show you how to extract U.S. Census information into an Excel spreadsheet so that you can filter it to find other family members and fan club members and stuff who are living near your ancestors. Hey, if this is your first time here, my name is Connie Knox. And in this demonstration, we're using Ancestry.com, but it works also on uh, FamilySearch.org, MyHeritage, and the rest of them, okay? So in this demonstration, we're using Excel, but you could also do this in a Google Sheets. We'll talk about that in a minute. For the Excel people, you got to have a version 2013 or greater for this trick to work. You can do the same thing, like I said, in Google Sheets using a paste. It's a paste special function called values only. So if you want to try that on Google Sheets, it works as well, but you're going to get the idea here in a minute. There is a handout for this episode and it's got all the step-by-step -step instructions for those of you who are using Excel. So check out the description box for the three different ways you can get the handouts. In this video, I am talking about a family history mystery that I used where I used uh, the 1860 census and Excel to narrow down the list of possible suspects that I was trying to find. So check it out. Okay, so I can't wait to show this to you, so we're going to jump right in. So every good research project starts with the research question. And my research question revolves around Henry Gustav, or Gus Henley. Uh, we don't know who his father is. And Rebecca, his mother, family lore says that she took it to her grave uh, as to who the father of her children were. She enjoyed having children around, but didn't care much for the men. So this is uh, Rebecca. She is my second great-grandmother, and I am trying to find who my great-grandfather's father is. So in an effort to find him, one of my male cousins on the Henley side uh, took a Y-DNA test, and it came back, all of the results for that Y-DNA test came back with a surname of Davis. So I am on the hunt for a Davis male who would have been about the right age at the right time in the right location when Rebecca here conceived Henry Gustav Henley when she was about 30 years old. So in order to do that, I love this trick. You're going to love this. So Rebecca probably conceived uh, Henry in 1861 because he was born in January of 1862. So looking at the 1860 census, here we find Rebecca Henley, and she is basically a seamstress, and some of her children are here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this. Remember, we're on image 8. You want to always try and take a look at what image you're on so you can get back there easily. Now we're going to come over to this little people icon. We're going to open this up, and it gives us the transcription of everything in this document. Now, normally what I like to do is I like to go, you know, back about 5 to 10 pages and forward uh, five to ten pages to take a look at all of the people that probably are within walking distance or so. Now remember we're looking for Davis. Davis men who are in the neighborhood who are about the right age to have fathered a child. So Rebecca's 30 years old, okay, and so instead of clicking, 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 you know, the back button, I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to hit a one. Now I'm back on Image number one, I'm going to start here. And instead of reading through every name on here, I'm just going to extract all this data from this section down here. So I click in here, it doesn't matter where I click, it really doesn't matter. And I'm going to go Control A to highlight everything. That's basically capturing all. And then I'm going to Control C. Now, if you're on a Mac, uh, that would be a Command C. Then I'm going to go over to my Excel spreadsheet and I'm going to paste it. Now you could do the same uh, or similar uh, function on Google Sheets. So instead of just right clicking or going up to edit and paste, I, instead of just pasting one of these, I'm going to paste a special. And this is the trick that I got from one of our viewers, which is awesome. So I'm sharing that with you. The trick is to, to paste special and then paste it as text and watch what happens. Bada bing. Now I forgot to insert a column right here. And if you do that, I do want to insert a column here and there's a reason for that. 
I can uh, highlight the column from the A all the way at the top, not this cell, but all the way at the top, and I can right click and I can say insert. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to put an image down, uh, an image number here. So I don't need all of this extra information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this number one, which highlights the whole column. But instead of just one, I'm going to highlight, I'm dragging, I'm clicking and dragging. And now I've got all of those rows highlighted. I'm going to let go and I'm going to right click and I'm going to say delete. And what that'll do by doing it this way, it's going to pull up all of the field. So we're on row number one. If I had highlighted everything and hit delete as a cell, it would leave this big gaping hole there. So now I'm going to type the word image uh, because that all of this information came from image number one. I'm going to type a one here. And if I go back over that cell where this little tiny handle is on the side, when I see that the, the little plus symbol come up, that means I can grab that handle and I can drag it down. And I'm going to drag it down for the length of all of these lines that we copied from image number one. Now, as I go down here, I don't need the word close, so I'm going to delete that out of there. Now, let's go back over to our census record, and we're going to go to the next page. And I'm going to use the right hand button here. Now, I've still got everything highlighted, which is kind of convenient, but if you forget, you can always highlight everything again. So I'm going over to page two and everything here is highlighted. So all I have to do is go control C to copy. Now I'm going to go back over to the Excel spreadsheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to say paste special. And I keep forgetting to do this because I keep wanting to just paste the regular way. So I say, okay. And now I've got all this stuff again that I don't need. And I'm going to just, if you grab a, a cell, see where it says two, if you get a double headed arrow, you can just drag that whole cell down here. And now I'm going to get rid of all of these that I don't need. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say delete. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this two and I'm going to drag it all the way to the bottom to there. And now I'm going to get rid of that little close. I don't need that. That's a holdover from all the stuff that we copied over. So now you can see this is image one and image two. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, clean this up, all these headers up here because, well, for example, it says dwelling number, but you don't see the word number. So what you can do is you can double, you can kind of like highlight over between the, the B and the C column until you get that double headed arrow. And if you double click, It'll expand to the width of whatever the widest thing is in that cell. You can also do this to make it narrower um, by double clicking there. That made it smaller. Well, I don't want to sit here and double click everything. I'm lazy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take C and I'm going to drag across to the entire width of everything I have here. And if you hold hover over the right hand side and double click, it's going to automatically expand all of the fields to their widest needed space, I guess. And there we go. So now we have everything uh, much neater. I'm going to take this row right here. I'm clicking on the one so that I highlight everything in this row and I'm going to make it bold just to make it look pretty. And now what I'm going to do is I want to lock this. So as I'm scrolling down, I don't lose the headers because I want to remember what these things mean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to the number two and lock everything above it and click the view tab and then come over here to where it says freeze panes and hit the down arrow. And then in this case, I, I'm going to say freeze the top row. So uh, that way, when I am scrolling down, it's, it's keeping that, that top row always visible. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to continue to do this. And now this was from image number three, so we're going to say image number three. We're going to grab that little right hand handle there and drag it down to the length of that. This is the part you're going to love. Now I have already done. Now you're going to keep doing this. You're like, you're going to do this for five to 10 pages on either side of your target ancestor. But the reason why you're doing this is you're capturing all this data 
you will never have to do this again for the 1860 census in Randolph County, specifically this division of that Excel spreadsheet, I mean, of that census record, okay? So now I'm gonna jump over to this example because I have already created this example. And what I did here is I created some uh, filters. Now I'm gonna turn off the filters just so that you see what I did. Okay, so now here it is without the filters, okay? One of the things that I did also, and that you probably should do, is insert some rows. You can do that by highlighting some rows. You can right click and say insert, and see how many rows it inserted. Control Z, un we'll undo that. I don't need those extra rows, but um, one of the things that I wanna remind you to do is to put the information in that you're going to need for a source citation right? I've got image number eight, dwelling 64, family number 60. So I've got everything in there. Plus I've added the link directly to this image, uh, image number eight, so that I can find this target ancestor. Rebecca Henley is my target ancestor. I can find her again quickly if I want to, because this is coming off of Ancestry, but Family Search is the same thing. This really, um, I find to be best works off of Ancestry, but that's just me. Since I've added this extra information on this, as opposed to this sheet, where on the first sheet, we had we froze the first header where things would slide up underneath the header. But on this example here, I had inserted by, you know, highlighting and right clicking and inserting some fields because I wanted to add this uh, source citation information and the website that shows the original image of Rebecca on image number eight. So now what I wanna do is I wanna freeze these panes. I wanna freeze everything from one through five so that this data scrolls up underneath the headers now. It's not going to be just the top row anymore. So that's really a split. So what you do is you put your mouse underneath, uh, you click in the cell right underneath the header, and then you come up to view, make sure you're on the view tab and you choose split. And now it puts this big thick bar in here and when you scroll, it scrolls up underneath that big bar. And if you wanna remove it, just hit split again and it'll, it'll remove it. Now, if you go too far, you're gonna actually see double everything above the split and you're gonna see it again here. But once you start to scroll, you get the idea. All right, so in this example now, as we scroll down, you'll see that I have created uh, all of these image numbers all the way down. In fact, let's see how far I went. I think I went to like 15 or 16. Yeah, I went to image 16. So remember, Rebecca was on image number eight. So here's the cool part. You're going to love this now. This is this is, this is is only getting you set up for the trick, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to take these, these headers right here and we're going to create some filters. Now I'm going to go back to the Home tab because the filter is on the Home tab and see where it says Sort and Filter. You're going to click the down arrow and it's this funnel looking uh, filter that we want, okay? And what that's going to do is it's going to put a, a filter, uh, a down arrow in each one of these column headers. So now remember the mission here is to find a Davis who is roughly in the 30 year old range, certainly within the fathering age range, okay? And so now that I've got the entire community in and around Rebecca, I am going to sort down to Davis. So what you do is you click this down arrow right here. In fact, let me unhighlight. There we go. So now you can see it better. So now I'm going to hit this down arrow and you can see all of the surnames that are in this community. And if you'll notice by doing this, you can get variations of spellings. So if you have, uh, in my case, Henley and Henley, um, both ancestors of mine, you can uh, deselect everything. Let me show you. Turn off, select all. And then we're going to come down here to... We're going to pick the two Henleys that are spelled differently and I'm going to say OK and it's truncated my whole list to just the Henleys in the neighborhood. And here's Rebecca right here and that's a couple of her kids right here. All right, so let's unfilter that for a moment. Let's go back to select all so we see the whole list again. Now we're going to look for Davis. So we're going to select 
unselect all, and we're going to scroll down till we see Davis. There's Davis, and we hit OK. So now I have every Davis in the community. But if you'll notice, there are some women in here as well. I don't need any women in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the gender field, and I'm going to select only men and hit go. So now I have a shorter list of all the Davis men who are living in and around uh, Rebecca, at least as far as the pages go in either direction. This little 12 October is not really a 12 October. When you extract the data that way, what that is, is a child who is 10 months old. And it's a fraction on the census, and it makes it look like uh, a date when it's imported. So that's really a child. So what I can do is as I'm sitting here going through here, I'm going, all right, well, let's see if we can identify what men in this list might actually be potential fathers. Now, there are three Davises living really close to Rebecca, um, but one of them is 75 years old. So I'm going to highlight this guy, say, mm, not likely. So I'm going to take a color and I'm just going to gray him out. I can still see him there, but I'm graying him out because he's not likely. Now we have a 16 year old. Well, maybe I could, I'll give it a yellow. This guy, William, is 11, so I'm going to gray him out. And I'm going to say, here's Joel Davis, who's 76 years old. I'm going to gray him out. Uh, we know that Willie, the infant, is not a possibility, so we're going to gray him out. We got a five-year-old. That's not likely, so I'm going to gray that one out. And now we've got Exum Davis, who is a likely candidate. And we've got... Mike is 51, maybe. Um, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna give all these guys here uh, yellow. So now I've got it down to a short list. Here I've got this guy's probably not likely. I would go with the people who are gonna be a age range attractive to Rebecca. I'm gonna say that Joshua is. If I'm gonna sit here, let me put it this way. If I'm gonna do the research. To study people, I'm going to start with the most likely candidates. So I'm going to say Joshua is a likely candidate, and I'm going to say Exum is a likely candidate. And maybe George, you know, she George would be 10 years older than Rebecca. The most likely candidate from an age range is Exum Davis. Now, these guys are on image 13. This is why I told you to put an image in here, because now we know exactly what page in the census record we can go look and go, okay, he's on image 13. So there's Exum Davis right here. He's married. He has some children living in the house. And there's Willie, the 10-month-old. Okay, so most of these Davises that we saw, there's the five-year-old Ben, but you get the idea. So here is Exum Davis. He is on image 13. Rebecca was on image eight, which is only five pages away. Okay, so we don't know for sure if Exum Davis is the father or not, or if Joshua or George or Mike or any of these others are, but I do know, and what you don't know, is that Joshua and Exum are brothers. I have already done a lot of this research, and both Exum and Joshua appear as bondsmen in bastardy bonds, um, where Rebecca had to state who the father was of her uh, illegitimate children. That was the law back then. Well, Exum and Joshua appear twice. Joshua appears twice. Exum appears once in different bastardy bonds. Unfortunately, though, it's not a bastardy bond that fits my uh, great-grandfather, but it does fit the other children. So the bastardy bonds, she has several children here. Uh, the bastardy bonds do fit a couple of the children, but they don't fit from, an, from a timeline when those bastardy bonds in court was in 1862. There isn't one there, and I suspect it's because that's when the Civil War was happening and a lot of the courts were shut down. So I suspect that there's no bastardy bond uh, for this, this birth because it was right when things were starting to uh, take off with the Civil War. So this little trick has taken a very long list. If you think about it, I had 16 pages if we unfilter this and select all, 
we can now see them popping up. These are just the males now. I have not unfiltered the females. But we can see uh, where they fall in the, in the overall data. Now you want to save this. You want to save early, save often. Here I go. I'm going to hit save because you can use this file over and over and over again. So ne maybe next time you are looking for more Henleys or you're looking for somebody else with another surname or you trip across another name that you're starting to see on a regular basis. I see a lot of lambs in my uh, in the records. And so maybe, oh, here's Winslow. Now I know that there are Winslows in my family. So then, okay, maybe this is a different research question. And I go and I say, I want to see all the Winslows. So then I come over here and I click Winslow and I say, okay. And now I get a short list of all the Winslows that are in the 16 pages of census records in and around my ancestors. So I have unfiltered this and I just want to remind you of a couple things. Make sure you have header information. Make sure that your uh, document is titled properly and where you can find it again. Make sure that you have a link to the census record from which you got this from. You can unfilter these if you want or you can filter just one column if you want but as a reminder you can come over here and you can see how that that has a gray on it we can unfilter that by turning that off also as a recap you want to go underneath the headers when you're turning the split on and again that's under the view tab and see how that's already selected for us we can turn that off and then it goes away we put that cell right back where we want the split to happen and we turn it back on and so then we can scroll up underneath there are three ways you can get the handouts now the first way is to join the channel membership here at the information access level channel membership on the youtube channel and then go to the community tab and you'll find the posts that have the handout links in there all you have to do is follow the link and download the handouts. Okay, now the second way is over at Patreon. Now at Patreon, if you're at the happy dance level or higher, uh, you can get the handouts. Those come directly to you in an email every time we announce the new video that has a handout with it. You'll also get early release with that membership. All right, and then the third way is just to go over to genealogytv.org and click on the handouts tab and you can find all the handouts there for individual purchase. So uh, I hope that was helpful. The handouts really do support the channel and for that, I thank you.